In this video, I'm briefly going to cover the basic elements of BPMN, or the Business Process Model Notation Language. So before BPMN, there really was no common language to depict a business process, both to visually depict um, and utilize this for uh, the purpose not only of documentation, but for uh, the purpose of execution. So a lot of different tools use different notations, different icons, and different ways to represent the steps and flows of a process. So BPMN was created in order to create that common language. The basic elements of a BPMN map, they start with pools and swim lanes. And what pools and swim lanes let us do is organize the uh, information or the activities and events in our map. So in my diagram, my example here, I have one pool, and that is my company pool. And within that pool, I have two swim lanes. I have a lane for the finance department, and so the, these are the activities that are going to occur within the finance department. And then I have my line of business, and the activities represented in this lane occur in the line of business. So it lets me show um, the activities that are occurring and how that information moves between those various what could be roles or departments uh, and so on. And um, so another example that we you know, could use uh, to show swim lanes and pools. Let's say I wanted to depict an HR onboard process and I wanted to show how the process would flow between the various organizations. So I could have a, you know, my company pool and then within my company pool I could have a lane for my HR department, for maybe my facilities department, for my employee and manager roles. And then when I create my diagram, I could then show how that information moves between these various roles and departments. The next basic element that we have in our map are events. And so events are represented by circles. And you can have different types of events, but for the sake of simplicity in this map, we have a start event and then we have an end event. The next basic element are activities. And activities are the things that occur or, or happen and get done. So work getting performed or done, whether that's by people or by systems. And those are represented by rounded corner rectangles. And we can see in my map I have several. So I have two tasks and I also have another type of activity, and this activity you see here has a plus sign. And what that's indicating is that this activity is actually a representation of multiple activities. So it's actually a sub-process. So it's indicating that within this activity there are several independent activities that are occurring. So for example, let's say this was an AP process and the first activity is for the AP clerk to, let's say, encode or code the invoice. And we can either go to the pay task, and someone will actually pay that invoice, or we could go to an approval process. And that approval process may require multiple levels of approval based on perhaps the dollar amount of that invoice. So this is a sub-process which contains those individual approvals. The next basic element are gateways. And gateways really are essential in that they control the flow of the map. So for example, again, if we use our AP analogy, and based on a certain the dollar amount of this invoice, when we reach this gateway, which happens to be an exclusive gateway, meaning we're going to go either down one path or another, in this case, if the invoice is over a certain dollar amount, then we may need to go to the approval process. Or, if not, then we'll go to the pay activity or pay task. So the gateway controls the flow. 
So gateways can be um, can control flow in a single direction, or it can control parallel activities or synchronization of paths coming into a gateway. And so if you think about it like a train switch, um, that's one way that you can think about gateways. And then the last item that I'll talk about here in our map are annotations. And annotations are simply ways to improve the information uh, on the map, so just to provide more context. So here we have a text annotation, and the dotted line just shows an association to this subprocess. So I might add text to describe what's occurring in this subprocess, for example. Uh, and I have another annotation here, it's a document annotation. So there's different ways for me to add information into the map to simply make it easier for the person who's reading it and to give them more context or more information. So these are the very basic elements of a BPMN process model.